Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are just going to give it a few moments to let everyone enter in and get situated, and we will begin in about two minutes. Thanks for your patience. If you are just now entering, welcome. Just gonna give it one more minute uh, to let everybody in and then we will get started. Thanks so much. All right, looks like we are good to begin. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We have an awesome webinar in store for you today. If you do have any questions that pop up uh, during the presentation, please feel free to just drop those in the question box on the right-hand GoToWebinar control panel, and we will be sure to get those answered for you. Um, and at this point, I am going to turn it over to our wonderful presenters, Rupin and Jose. Thank you, Madison, and welcome everybody. This is Rupin Shaw. I am the VP of Business Development in Channels and Alliances here at Attack IQ. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to uh, join us today. Uh, I've been with the company uh, here to really drive our services arm, um, and I say our managed services solution for our MSSP partners and consultants. And some of the products that we have, uh, solutions we have developed, have been tailored specifically just for that market. And so you're going to hear a lot from Jose and see how we are we framed and created that framework for our consultants and uh, partners. And so the, the question is, you know, why why are, why is this a need? Um, and many of you may be familiar with Attack IQ, but security control validation is generally not necessarily thought of at many organizations. They, they, they deploy a lot of the solutions, security solutions out there, whether it be an MDR, EDR, antivirus, firewall. Um, but what happens is like me and as a consumer with my house alarm, um, I, I need to have it tested. And the same way, organizations need to be tested to make sure the equipment and uh, solutions that they've deployed have been validated and that they're configured properly and that they are resilient in making sure of uh, being protected against any kind of threats um, in the market. So what, what we've designed today and what you're gonna hear about with Attack IQ Ready solution is the ability for consultants really, to, and, and why is it compelling for consultants, is that Ready provides some of that that uh, solution or testing very quickly so you can get results quickly for your clients. What does that mean? Is that you actually can help lower some of your cost uh, in, in increase your own margins and services to, to clients. So you look better, you save more money, and you can even pass on those, those savings to your clients. Uh, second is being able to provide much more comprehensive um, a testing. There's generally uh, a issue with complexity or skills gaps at lots of clients or organizations. So what you can provide is this ability to augment your skills with, with Attack IQ Ready. And 
sometimes we call that the red teaming or concierge concierge service red teaming and that's where we believe attack iq ready is well tuned to provide consultants armed with a ability to have uh, a state-of-the-art testing solution for both cyber hygiene and threat informed defense and so without further ado i'm going to transition this to jose to really talk about how we've designed attack iq ready perfectly for consultants and providing this high value uh kind of service to our clients to make sure that they are protected and that's the end goal is uh, for for us to help the world become a safer place so with that jose i will transition it to you and if again if you have any questions please post it we will either answer the questions during the presentation or towards the end, depending on how uh, time permits. Thanks, Rupin, for that introduction. And hi, everyone. Uh, as you heard already, my name is Jose Barajas. I'm the VP of Global Sales Engineering here at Attack IQ. Today, I'm going to be showing you our Attack IQ Partner Portal, which is going to be your service delivery framework uh, to become uh, and work with your clients for, in a consultative fashion. And to Rupin's point earlier, instead of you know focusing on the testing, um, you know a Tech IQ, uh, given with almost over a decade of experience in doing that, we're going to enable you uh, to have that testing framework so that you can imp uh, employ impl implement that within your customer's environment and put you in a position to really provide a consultative service and helping your customers get better based on their goals and objectives. So. With that in mind, today what we'll walk you through is how you're going to go about first and foremost establishing your service. So I'll quickly show you how that's done through the Attack IQ Partner Portal, which is our offering to you. From there, I want to show you how a customer would typically get onboarded. What's going to be their experience? How are they going to set it up and get started with the testing? From there, how would you engage with the customer? How would you leverage the output and details that Attack IQ provides as part of this service in order to be able to provide consultative feedback back to your client? and work together with them to make their environment better. And then finally, as you onboard many clients, we give you the ability to understand and, and control insights. Um, so we'll go back to the partner portal and show you how beyond just managing an individual customer, how you can start to understand patterns across the customer base as you start to have more and more customers on the service. So that's what I have in store for you today. Uh, as we said already, please feel free to add any questions to the chat. I'll either address them uh, if, if it's relevant to my uh, current focus on the demo, or if not, we'll talk we'll definitely address it at the end. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with establishing your offering. And this is the Attack IQ Partner Portal. As you can see, I have multiple customers that I'm able to manage. Now, I'm not gonna get into this in, for the purposes of today, but you can definitely add and create new customer tenants. Very quickly, this is essentially you being able to provide breach and attack simulation as a service. So your own SaaS offering where your individual clients can get created, they have uh, multi-tenant segregation as part of that, and you can entitle them with access to either Ready or Flex. The focus of today though is gonna be around the Ready service. Now, one of the key features that I think you'll really appreciate is actually the ability for you to create your own custom offering altogether. At Attack IQ, we provide testing across security baseline testing, adversary emulation, and even emerging threats. As new threats uh, continues to come out, we provide that. And as part of your service, you can actually define what are going to be the default items that you want to offer to your client as part of the service. Now, beyond that, uh, one of the things that we also allow you to do is to actually create your own service offering. So here, uh, as Acme, I have my Acme curated service. And currently, I have these three um, specific types of tests that I want to run. Focus around content filtering, endpoint antivirus, and EDR. Now, you can go ahead and, and select into either additional control capabilities that you want to provide consultative feedback on and work with your customers. Uh, but essentially, this is your way of defining your, uh, your offering uh, based on either threat emulations that you want to run with or, again, some security base sense that you want to run as part of that process. As you can see here, uh, we can go ahead and turn that on. And then now that uh, service is gonna be available to the client. And as we said, you can even define what the defaults will be so that as you're onboarding more and more customers, you can define what the default service is gonna be. That's all it takes to provide an offering through a Tech IQ. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, once you generate a tenant for one of your clients, what's going to be required for them to set up so that you can start getting the feedback to work together with that client uh, to reach their end goals for their security program. And we'll do that through one of my customers here, uh, which is Sable Bluff Labs. Uh, for those of you that might have taken the academy, Sable Bluff Labs is a corporation for which you do a number of exercises for. Uh, and as you can see here, Sable Bluff Labs, we have them as a customer as part of our ready service. Now, in terms of customer onboarding, as you create a tenant like this one, the customers will get their own invite. They'll be able to access their tenant, of course. And in order to get started, there's only two simple steps required. The first one is deployment of an agent. In this environment, as you can see, we already have two agents deployed, which means as, uh, as we're ready to go ahead and run some testing from that perspective. Now, the only other component that's gonna be required is gonna be around detections. We have a detections tab where you can configure uh, any given technology, whether it's an ER or a firewall, so that you can get context from not only the ability for your client to interdict a given attack, but also understand what their process is. Meaning, as you run an attack, did that context make it back to their detection technology? If it did, uh, how was it detected? Those are the kind of things and insights that you'll be able to get as part of this process. But with the deployment of an agent and simple configuration of the detections, that's all your client needs to do in order to get started with your service. Now, we do give the ability for your client to define specifically at what schedule they want to run any service on. As you can see here uh, in this service, this actually happens to run every Thursday at 10 a.m. So as part of that process, as you can see, we already had some items that, that ran earlier today. Uh, but from that perspective, as you can see, the client here has four specific areas that they're focusing on. And beyond that, um, I just want to show you is that while these are going to run as part of a weekly schedule, uh, that's how we can provide continuous testing. And you as a consultant will get insights from the reports and the feedback that we provide from a results perspective to be able to provide your client uh, some recommendations. Or if you actually manage things end to end, go ahead and correct some of the issues that are potentially found and address them as part of the process. Now, what I quickly wanna call out is there's an opportunity for you to either completely abstract your customers, uh, some partners prefer it that way, where this is just a service delivery framework for you to execute, or what we see mostly is you guys working together with the client, meaning they can run the weekly tests, they can come in here and look at the reports themselves, but they can also run things on demand. Uh, from that perspective, if they wanted to say run the content filter or let's say EDR, you've provided some recommendations of implementation from your consulting perspective. Well, now they can go ahead and run things on demand. Now I go ahead and run that so that they can go ahead and understand, okay, I just made some changes. How do those changes actually affect the outcomes and results for that customer? So with that in mind, um, uh, that's all it takes for the customer to get started and for the service to actually start testing as part of a weekly basis. Now, from here, let's actually focus on how we would engage with the customer and use the Attack IQ Ready reporting as a basis to provide customers some feedback on some anomalies that are being identified, recommendations on what are some things that they can mitigate, and then how we can track the work and improvement that they're uh, producing over time as they engage with you as part of the service as well. Now, let's go ahead and before I, I get into some of the reports, I wanna show you that, um, that as part of a, this service, you actually have the ability to completely manage uh, your customers uh, and actually see the results uh, here directly. So if I take a look at one of these examples, retailers, I can actually see all the activity that they ran previously and some of the reports uh, and testing that they ran and actually view it directly from this perspective. But with that in mind, let's actually go ahead and take a look at one of uh, the reports that we ran as part of the service, starting with our security baseline reporting. Now, as you can see here, we're testing four key areas, same key areas that we saw previously for this client, and that's gonna be focused around uh, these four technology categories that you see in front of you. Now, uh, if we scroll further down, we can actually take a look in this report, it's gonna help understand your customer, um, these areas around what is it that we're testing through the executive summary, what are some of the findings? And then of course, we're gonna provide some recommendations and mitigations based on the outcomes that we observe as part of the service. Now, 
one thing that we'll provide is a very high level overview of across the technologies, what is the coverage that we've observed. As you can see, uh, Sable Bluff Labs currently has 43% coverage. What this means is that of the 138 scenarios that we ran, only 60 of them were either prevented or detected. So definitely have some work to do here, but that's exactly why we test, to understand the environment and use that context to, to be better as part of our process. Uh, we can see here some of the uh, hosts that we tested uh, and, and finally what the results were overall. Now, as we can see here at a very high level per technology category, the purple bar is gonna show you how many of the items were actually pre prevented. As we can see, next generation files only preventing about 42%. Definitely gonna have to work in, in those areas. Um, you know, endpoint antivirus, we see four of the items are detected. Uh, and then finally, EDR, which is what I'm gonna focus on today, we have pretty good prevention, about 90% prevented. However, only 31% prevention. So right off the bat, without even diving into the details, uh, we can get a good understanding and measure of where their strengths are. Clearly, EDR is the strength in this environment and where we have some work to do uh, as well uh, as part of this. But let's go ahead and, and, and take a little bit more look at the details to help you understand um, uh, how to provide some more context to the client. Now, if we jump down to the section focus on EDR, which is going to be the focus, we can see, uh, first and foremost, the different categories. So the tactic level uh, behaviors that are being executed as part of that, and then the specific activity that was generated or, or, or technique that was executed as part of that process. Um, from here, there's actually a, quite a few things that I'm already noticing. And again, this is going to be the same process that you can do with your clients, understanding, first and foremost, we have some areas where we have no mitigations at all, no mitigations and no detections. So that's something that we need to dive into and figure out. That's one immediate uh, point of feedback that we can raise to this client. And then something else that stands out to me is we have this inconsistency between these two assets. While one of them seems to be detecting a lot of these items, that doesn't seem to be the case with one of the other assets. So that Really, uh, right off the bat, we have a number of different inconsistencies with this, this environment. But again, this is exactly what we want to test and put you in a position to engage with your customer to dig into these, unpack and understand what's going on here in order to address uh, some of the issues that were found. So that's essentially um, you know, the reporting that, uh, that we have available to you. Let's actually show you an example. Uh, I think the two key things that um, you know, I focused on in my lab as developing this is one, um, we're missing some, we had some uh, some detections from the perspective of AV. Uh, we have some inconsistencies from the perspective of EDR. And since EDR is a focus, we have some gaps that we probably want to close. Um, so at this point, we want to start by addressing um, some of the quick wins that we can get here, meaning why is it that one asset is doing quite well while another one um, has an outright gap? Um, meaning the company clearly has the capability to do this. They're just not rolling it out consistently with those environments. So let's take a look at uh, once we wanted to dig into that, understand our policies and make sure that policies were uh, appropriately implemented, what our results look like. Now, as you can see here, um, we now have a summary for the second run. Uh, at this point, we can see that EDR went from about 40% coverage to about 63% coverage from a detection perspective. So that's something interesting to note. Um, something else that I noted, uh, however, is that our AV is now not doing quite well at all. So uh, while last week it was doing pretty good, uh, this week it's, it's not stopping anything. So now another key finding that we can have here for our client. Uh, and if we dive into this a little bit further, we can now take a look at the results from an EDR perspective. And uh, while we haven't addressed, in this case, the credentials and registry script, uh, which is a gap that, that was observed here. Um, we, we have now been able to go back and uh, by applying the same policy, essentially in my lab, I had different policies on the different assets. And by implementing that through the findings, we now have consistencies within this environment. This is exactly why we do testing. This is exactly why we want to establish this process to get not only understanding where the customer is, but where they are once they implement some of these controls, and then going forward, some of the wins that we might have, like AV working the first one, but not this one, making sure that we don't have any of those kind of things dropping off as part of our process. Now, some of the recommendations from here might be to um, you know, further uh, implement some mitigations. And as part of the service, 
I'm jumping down to the recommendations and mitigation section. Uh, we provide mitigations for every single result that we have. As we can see here from the perspective of credential and registry script, we can see that these two assets were the ones that failed. And we have three types of recommendations for you to follow. One are recommendations directly from the Attack IQ research team. As we implement uh, testing or certain attacks, we want to understand what the best approach to mitigating it, and these are what these mitigations represent. Beyond that, we have signal rules. Um, so if your team needs to implement some detection, use that detection as a way of mitigation. We have here two sigma rule recommendations that can be applied. And then finally, MITRE attack mitigations. Um, these are mitigations directly from MITRE. So as we have certain attacks within the environment, um, those MITRE mitigations will be mapped as well. So really this, this puts you in a position to help the customer understand where their status is, what are the mitigations that are available to them, and really help them understand what makes sense uh, from either a prioritization perspective or given their environment and implementation capabilities, what is the best next step for them to improve their environment here? Now, uh, there was some detection that we're still missing and wanted to implement uh, some, um, you know, uh, such as this example here. So let's take a look at uh, what are some of the findings that we have uh, when we do a third run and just to show you uh, an example. So here, as you can see, uh, we now got in a little bit better. Uh, we have about an 86% detection covered. So some of the implementations and recommendations um, that we provided to this customer clearly made a change. And something else that happened is now we have those detections from antivirus fat. Now, we definitely have some work to do uh, on the, from the perspective of baby. However, at least what we previously known to be true from the capabilities perspective of this client, we've now confirmed that that's been fixed. In my case, uh, the actual installation of the AV uh, had failed in, in my deployment uh, update. Um, so going back and fixing that has actually made the change here. But again, as a consultant offering this as a service, we now have these metrics over time so that you can identify these kind of discrepancies and help the client address those uh, as part of your process working with them. Now, we still have a number of work to do on the next generation firewall and content filter. But as you can see, we have a number of improvements. You know, previously this uh, PowerShell script was not being uh, appropriately detected. That's one area of improvements. And then finally, we still have that credentials and registry that we got to work with the client on fixing. But at least uh, all the other key areas seem to have now have appropriate prevention and detection, which is exactly what we want. Now, while I led with the focus on control validation, we also provide the ability for the client, and let's go back to our customer tenant, uh, but we also provide the ability for the customer to also run some threat-based emulations as well. Let's take a look at one of the threat-based emulations that was ran by this client, and we'll take a look at the latest one. Uh, looks like this was ran today, which is actually Turla. Uh, now, those of you hearing the word Turla are probably thinking, uh, definitely, an area uh, that at least uh, here at Tech IQ, we've had a number of customers ask us about. So let's go ahead and show you how, now that we've at least improved EDR and ensured that um, you know uh, some of the key areas are now being mitigated and detected, let's take a look at what the current control capabilities mean when it comes to something uh, like an adversary like Turla running in the customer's environment. So from here, we're gonna provide, again, coverage and understanding of uh, you know, out of all the capabilities uh, that Turla tried to invoke, how many of those were actually either prevented or detected? That's how we're arriving at the 52% mark. And as we can see, there's actually four stages uh, within this assessment uh, that, that we ran in this case. What we'll do to help you understand for the client where we stand is actually break down every single one of these threat-based emulations by stage. As you can see here, we have initial access which is made up of these three stages. And one thing to note is that, you know, create registry entry, uh, which is aligned with the previous registry entry, is something that we're not really noticing. Um, so again, that's just gonna be another reason why that client should follow your recommendations and make sure that that registry in script is actually, uh, you know, uh, showcasing there uh, and, and, and is mitigated. If we look down further still in some of these other stages, we have some gaps that, we need to address. So while we have some good baseline from our controls capabilities, uh, there's still some work and key areas that you can help this client improve. 
And um, again, like with anything, like we showed you previously, every single one of these CTPs is gonna come with mitigation recommendations. And further still, we'll do a breakdown of all of the threat capabilities, meaning that you know, stage by stage, we're gonna show you what the focus and goal of the given stage was, and have a breakdown so that you can walk through this with your client, help them understand what the threats are, why the given steps matter as part of the threat, uh, and, and, and help them get better as part of a process. So this is gonna be our threat-based emulations uh, and, 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 and context that you can use to engage with your client as part of your process and as part of your service. One thing I, I forgot to note, and I'm gonna go back here and show you is actually, we also measure the improvements over time here. So as you can see here, uh, you know, the work that we've done with this client, uh, if we go back to the baseline report, uh, has been an overall improvement about 36% coverage that was not previously there. Uh, you know, specific to EDR, there's a huge bump here. So uh, not only are we actually, you know, report by report showing you the status, but we're also highlighting what the change has been over time and essentially the work that you're doing with your client, what has been the net benefit of them actually working together with you as part of this process here. Um, now, with that in mind, um, we, the customer can continue to run the service on a weekly basis. Like I said, as they have the recommendations, they can go run things ad hoc. But as a service provider, you're gonna be managing many, many clients as part of the service. The whole point of providing you the service and capability so that you can service multiple clients uh, and being able to manage them directly. So let me go ahead and show you how you can accomplish some of that uh, if we go back to our partner portal. Now, um, one of the things uh, that I wanna specifically highlight here is your ability to actually notice patterns across your customers. So here I have a, a list of my five customers that I wanted to focus on. And as you're running with multiple customers, this is really going to give you a high level overview to understand, you know, what are, where is the current status of customers? In this case, this customer at the bottom seems like all their networking capabilities seem to not be doing so well, right? In comparison with the customer at the top, that seems to be doing pretty good overall. So uh, while you have the ability to go into every single client, understand their details and, and, and context and results at the individual level. As part of the service, we also give you the ability to have this overarching view over your clients and see, okay, great, you know, our first customer is doing awesome. They haven't changed, they haven't drifted because we have all the positives there, meaning that they're doing uh, you know, better than the baseline. But this customer here at the bottom needs some help. So from that perspective, uh, you know, that, that really puts you in a position to track your customers uh, at a very high level and then focus when on those that actually need a little bit more help from you or maybe need to purchase some additional services to help manage, say, their networking, their firewall, those sort of things. Now, beyond that, one last thing I wanna show you is gonna be around your ability to manage testing. Uh, beyond managing the service offering that you have, um, this also allows you to manage multiple customers uh, that you manage uh, as well. What I mean by that is there's two ways that you can manage your customers. One, you can actually set up scheduled testing. So as your customer has a specific ask, uh, as you're working with a client, and let's say they really want to understand you know, Mustang Panda as an example, we can now go ahead and actually add this to one or many of our clients as part of their weekly testing. What this means is that it as you saw earlier, uh, Sable Bluff Labs has testing every week on Thursdays. Uh, this is now gonna add it to the customers that I select as part of that weekly run, uh, enabling you to add additional testing based on either the service offering that you have or based on direct customer interactions as part of your consulting uh, process to then add additional testing. Now, while you can add it to their uh, expected weekly run, there may be some situations where a customer wants you to run things on demand. We see this a lot with threat of the day, right? The CEO comes in, uh, they saw something on Rashida ransomware in the news, and they're either asking you or asking your client, which is then asking you, are we protected or help me understand if I'm protected against Rashida ransomware. What this means is that we, you can actually go ahead and select you know, one or many of these tests. Again, select the customers where you wanna run things on, as an example. And then now we're gonna actually run things ad hoc. In this moment, each of these clients here is actually gonna be running uh, Rashida ransomware so that they can get the insights from the reporting 
And then of course, you can go ahead and once that run is done, review the report and get an understanding of where your customer stands uh, and either you know engage with them directly or now they have a report that they can use to go back to their boss and say, look, um, you know, I know you were considering our receipt of ransomware. We have about 85% coverage and you know, my consulting group that we work with is gonna help me address the last two items that we don't have today. So that's all I had for today, team. You know, this is you know, a very uh, a service delivery framework for you to service your clients, uh, put them in a position to do continuous testing week after week, while also enabling you or the client to self-serve to do additional testing, whether it's as a measure of ensuring that uh, you know, the changes that they're implementing are actually affecting the environment, or most importantly, just making sure that there's no changes over time. And if they do arise, say, a month into the service, uh, get to a root cause analysis as to why did that AV, in my case, why did that AV uh, you know, did not get deployed or updated as it should have as part of our process? Um, and make sure that we get at the root cause and then measure going forward uh, that there's no changes uh, as they continue to do testing with the product. So that's all I had for today, team. Uh, any questions from the group before we, we close our session today? I'm not seeing any questions at all from the group here. Uh, however, you know, feel free to follow up. Uh, with us directly, um, attackiq.com is a great way of reaching out to us uh, and either you know setting up your own uh, uh, you know a call with with either myself, Rupin, or our members of our team to discuss how you can start offering this same capability and service to your clients uh, and giving you a way of actually scaling out your services and letting the testing be done by us so that you can focus on consulting, providing recommendations, or directly making improvements to the client and then being able to showcase the value of your service uh, through hard evidence and metrics that you see here. Thank you for your time today.